Okay, so now what we have here is uh, Frito Crafts acylation of benzene, and um, what that allows us to do is to acylate something. So that means that if we have our benzene and some acyl chloride, what we end up forming is this kind of species here. And HCl is the other thing that ends up coming off. Uh, we can also use an anhydride for this, an acetic anhydride. Acetic anhydride to be a specific one, but there are other anhydrides we can use. And we will end up forming the same thing. And a carboxylic acid. Okay, so those are the general types of reactions and how does this work. Um, what we use here is AlCl3, that's a really good Lewis acid. So if you drew the Lewis structure for this, you would find out that aluminum does not have its own filled octet. So what ends up happening is it will end up um, grabbing on, electrons from this will help fill this species. And so what we'll have here is this RC double bond O Cl, which is attached to this AcL3. This has this slightly negative charge because it just got some electrons. This has this positive charge because it just gave them. So this will end up kicking those electrons off. And what we have here is this species, which is positively charged, and an anionic ACL4 minus. So this is the species that ends up undergoing reaction. And so if we have this R C double bond O positively charged species here, then our electrons can uh, grab on to that. So what we'll have there, keeping all the double bonds where I put them in the right places. So we'll have a C double bond O to the R. There's still an H on there. Positive charge up here, some base. It's gonna grab onto that H. And what we'll end up having and these electrons will go back up to here. We'll have this. I'm trying to keep everything in pretty much the, the same place that we've always had them in. Um, one thing to keep in mind though is that this species here, because it has its extra electrons, will still react with any excess aluminum chloride that we have present. And so what we do is just to wash it out. So when the reaction is done, we add a bunch of water because water will react with AlCl3 to make um, aluminum hydroxide, fairly unreactive, and hydrochloric acid. So we use that to sort of wash things out there when we're done. So it's a, it's a good way to, to, to do that. So that's the acylation. There is also an alkylation reaction that things can undergo. And so what we have here is benzene plus some um, alkyl halide in the presence of aluminum chloride to add an R group right here. So we've added an alkyl group onto the benzene ring. And just like all the others, we, this starts with making an electrophile. So again, the electrons that are around this chlorine, they can fill out the uh, good Lewis acid that's here. So what we have here is this. This has kind of a negative charge. This has kind of a plus charge. Electrons are given over to this. So we get this positively charged alkyl substance and AlCl4 minus. And this is what we're paying attention to because this is our electrophile. So our R plus ends up adding here and keeping all the double bonds in the same place. So if my R goes here, there's still an H here, positive charge up here, some base, it's gonna be able to grab onto that H. These electrons kick up here and we have this species here. So we've alkylated it. But there is a real danger of carbocation rearrangement. So that is, if we have some species and we've got like a terminal alkyl halide like we do here, remember this undergoes a reaction where um, CH3, CH2, CH2, CH2 plus is something that gets formed. So we have a primary carbocation here, a really unstable one, I might add. So the products that would come out of this, you know, let's, let's say this is the one you're going for, um, CH2, 2, 2, CH3. Let's say that's the one you're going for, but it turns out you can end up making something entirely different, CH, 
CH3, CH2, CH3. That is, we can end up adding it a secondary, and that's because there can be a 1-2 a hydride shift. And what that'll end up doing is making this species, CH3, CH2, CH, CH3, and now we've got a secondary carbocation which is much more stable, and then that can end up racking with benzene to make this species. So you really gotta watch out for carbocation rearrangements, and there will be other strategies that we employ to make sure that um, the reaction that we're trying to have does not compete with something that would already happen with the rearrangement. So we can try and keep that from happening by looking at other strategies. I hope that helps. We'll see you later.